Hello everyone, I'm Hong Deng from Ghent University. Today I will talk about a phase amplitude configurable monitor design based on silicon plasma dispersion effects. Let's say that a photonics link it consists of a laser source, an optical modulator, an optical single node processor, and photodetectors. And then we can know that the optical modulator is used to load the signals from the outside onto the uh, optical carrier. And then the optical signal processor is used to filter the optical signals, from, for example, from the amplitude, the phase, or at the delay times on it. And then the photo detector is used, can be used to uh, convert the optical signals to the electrical ones. So for modulator, we always hope that it can have a high modulation efficiency, has a low desorption or low insertion loss, other, and other expects. Let's say for ideal modulators. For example, for the eye intensity modulator, we hope that only the intensity of the signal can be changed. Or in other words, it's just two dots in the phaser diagram. As well as for a phase modulator, we hope that only the phase of the signal is changed, in, which means that in the um, phaser diagram, it just shows a perfect circle across on the uh, IQ plane. However, it is hard to get such an idea modulator in silicon photonics. For example, let's say for a widely used PN junction based phase modulator, it behaves like this. As we can see, when the reverse voltage changes, both of the intensity and the phase response of the modulator are changing. It means that the PN junction not only provides intensity as well, but also with the phase modulation at the same time. Or in other words, in the IQ plane, the modulation curve will not follow the perfect circle, but with the intensity drifts. On the other side, different applications will always write different requirements, and then for a silicon monitor, you can hardly meet all of them. For example, for a commonly used and Mark Zender monitor as an intensity monitor, it can hardly work on a large wavelength range because it is limited by the dispersion of the used directional coupler. Also, the phase response of the MDM changes with its intensity response because of the uh, inter interference. So during the uh, intensity modulation, the phase sheet, frequency shifts or the chirp will be introduced. And because of its uh, sinusoidal uh, modulation curve, a larger extension ratio always comes with a lower linearity in the same phase range. And also for phase modulator, as we discussed before, it ha always have the, uh, has the uh, superior intensity modulation because it is introduced by the plasma dispersion absorption and it's also hard to get a good linearity with a good phase trainable range in the same time. So in this talk, we proposed a reconfigurable modular design to may try to optimize for a lot of these applications. Let's say the scheme is consists of two tunable couplers and a phase dispersion modular and a phase shifter. By it has several freedoms. For example, for the tunable coupler, we can change the uh, splitting ratio. And for the phase shifter here, we can change the offset phase shifts of the uh, MZI. And also, we can also change the bell, DC bells on the modular arm. Then we can train the DC response and the RF response of this modulator. Now, let's talk a little bit about the formulas. Here shows the uh, transfer function of the structure. From here, we can see that the output light is 
phasor summation of two terms, and this term is the phase and intensity response of the phase modulator, and the uh, this term is the phase response of the phase shifter. Kappa one and kappa two is the coupling ratio of the tunable coupler one and the tunable coupler two. As we can see, the kappa one and kappa two will between zero and one, so the coefficients ratio it can be varied from zero to any number. And then the phase shift is can be changed from zero to two pi, which means that these two terms can be the relative intensity and phase can be set arbitrarily. Let's make it more clear about how the setting will affect the modulation curve of the original modulator. Let's say here if kappa 1 and kappa 2 equals to 0, and then the fully output will be the uh, voltage response of the original phase modulator, which let's suppose it shows like that way in that way. And then if we set kappa 1 and kappa 2 equal to 0 0.5, and then the normal curve will be half to be halved. And then there's another phaser sh shows, which means it goes from the phase shifter, and then the summation will de go here in this way. So if we set the diff kappa at different at different values of as well as the phase shifters, we can get different output modulation curve. For example, let's say uh, if kappa 1 and kappa 2 zero, equal to 0 0.5 and the phi s will be around 0 0.9 pi and then the final curve will follow here and then we can see it has a very good intensity modulation with little phase change. Also, if we set kappa 1 and kappa 2 equal to 0 0.1 and the phi s will be around minus 0 0.4 pi here, and then the modulation curve will be moved to here, and then it almost fits a perfect circle, so it gets to a kind of a pure phase modulation. To get all the possible response of this configurable modulator, we can do a sweep on the splitting ratio and the phase shifts. Here we assume that the kappa 1 should be equal to kappa 2 to cover all the uh, states because the structure is kind of uh, symmetric. And then we can just uh, sweep the splitting ratio from 0 to 0 0.5 because we suppose that most of the light should go through the modulator but not go through the um, phase shifter. Then we, from this control, the color is in shows the intensity change during the modulation. So from here we can see that they are can separate them in uh, different regions. Here the point A is got the lowest intensity change region. Here we can show that the curve is almost zero intensity change during the voltage range, which means that it has show kind of a pure phase modulation and when it the um, splitting ratio close to 0 0.5 normally we can imagine it can go already to an intensity modulator but here on point c you can see that the intensity change is very small like we can assume it can go to the top of the sinusoidal curve and then from the point d you can see that it's already crossing null point and of course, point B is kind of close to the quarter point, quarter point. We can also do the analyze for different targets. For example, here we can previously we do the uh, intensity modulator analyze. I can also do this for the linearity, for the uh, optical loss, or even for the phase modulation range of this uh, phase mod this configurable modulator. In reality, we fabbed this uh, modulator design in, from iMac, 
And then here for the tunable couplers, we use a tunable broadband coupler, which can support support uh, working wavelengths within around 40 or 50 nanometers with a very flat response. And then here is the pictures. Um, there are some testing results. For example, when we train the uh, spin ratio and the phase shift, uh, we can drive changes from original phase modulator to a pure phase modulation results. Here you can see that the yellow one is the um, original phase modulator itself. You can see that even within the forward bounce range, it's almost a no interference response. And then if we train it a little bit, we can see that during the reverse voltage range is very flat. Actually, the intensity modulation, the original one can have a kind of 0 0.5 intensity modulation. And after we train it a little bit, it can reduce to around 0 0.06 dB. However, in the forward bounced range, and it will have some uh, interference pattern because there is a little bit of light go through the lower arm. And also, we, if we set the kappa 1 and kappa 2 equal to 0 0.5 and uh, sweep the phase shifter here, then we can make the original phase modulation to an intensity modulation state. Here is the voltage added on the phase shifter, and then we can see that. Um, Actually, the MDM is bounced at a different uh, bounce point. For example, on, uh, for most of the uh, modulation, we make it on the quadrant point. And of course, we can also bounce it at the null point to make a RF frequent, double frequency or other usage. So in conclusion, in this talk, a scheme of a configurable modulator was proposed. It can be configured as an intensity modulator or a phase modulator. It can be also configured to optimize the performance, of course, as a trade-off of other parts. And also the RF bandwidth is independent with the uh, structure. So basically the RF performance can be kept. And another very big advantage is that this scheme is independent with the embedded modulator. So the modulator itself can be a standard PDK block or a self-designed one. We, for the optimization or for the changing, we just need a modulation curve, but the design details are not needed, which means that can be used for other things. So that's the end. Thank you for your attention.